everyone, it's Angelina and Dima from Walking Nature World. We're coming to you from Italy now. Just finished our trail via Francicina. In this video we're going to share with you our tips and tricks that we're able to come up to while doing the Via Francicina. Also our main impressions about this trail and some advice that may come in handy before you start. So there's gonna be lots of useful information in this video, so stay tuned and let's start! And before we start, we wanted to remind to any of you that may not know what Via Francicina is. Via Francicina is old pilgrim and trade way that stretches from Canterbury, England, then goes through all of the France and comes into the city of Rome, Italy. And it is around 1,800 kilometers long, but nobody knows exact number for sure. So most of the trail goes through France, but we were specifically interested in Italy, so we did only Italian part of the trail. We start in Aosta in the north of Italy, follow it for several days and then continue it through the province of Tuscany. So the first thing we wanted to discuss is the weather conditions and what is actually the best season to do this trail. We did this trail in July and we honestly wouldn't recommend it, especially for Tuscany. Field terrain is very challenging in the hot month of the summer because there is little to no shadow and sometimes you have to walk several kilometers with no shadow at all and that is cruel, believe us. The heat exhausts you and leaves you with no powers at all. And for us it definitely felt much more challenging than hiking for example to Mont Blanc in the mountains in the challenging terrain but in cooler weather and it felt much more easier. So if we would do it again we would probably choose the month of May, we think it's one of the best months to do this trail, the weather would be cooler, the fields would be greener with more flowers, so it probably would give even prettier landscapes around you. But also we think the September, October months in autumn would be also great, but not sure about the harvest season on the vineyards, so it may be a bit of disturbing time. But if you can, choose this month instead of July and August, these are the hottest, the cruelest months. And in case if you are willing to do the whole trail of Via Francicina, be aware of the Switzerland part of it, which is probably the most challenging part that goes through the mountain peaks, mountain tray in Alps. This part is actually better to do in summer, because there is obviously quite a lot of snow, so divide the trail wisely in order to have the best conditions possible and have the most enjoyable experience. In terms of difficultness of the trail, it was an easy level for the most part, and we think it's actually one of the easiest trails we took so far, because the landscape is not mountainous, a bit hilly in parts, but overall flat, and if it wasn't for the hot weather, it would be very easy to do. Water was another problem on the trail. Sometimes we had to walk 10 kilometers without water fountains to resupply. So it's definitely not enough water fountains on the way. If you have GPS navigation, it's better to flag water fountains that you find on the way in advance. So you can calculate how much water you need to take. Sometimes we had to ask for it in the private houses and the people were fine with allowing us to do it. So it's another option. Talking about food supplies is not a problem at all, because every day you pass through the villages and supermarkets, so you can resupply easily. And because we prefer cooking our own food, it was very important for us. Not to say about plenty of bars and restaurants on the way. And going a little bit off topic, we wanted to share with you our best food discoveries in Italy. And on the first place definitely goes ice cream. To be honest with you guys, we have never eaten so much ice cream in our lives. And we don't consider ourselves a big fans of it. But here in Italy it is so good that it is so hard to resist. Our most favorite flavor has been so far the cherry one, because we have never met it before anywhere in Spain, so the fruit flavors are our favorites. Here in Italy, even in the usual supermarkets, you can find the excellent quality ice cream, so that you don't have to search for it in any special gelaterias to try it, where it can be quite expensive. The focaccia bread was another great food discovery of Italy, especially we like the pizza margarita variety of it, but be aware when you see the name pizza, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be the classic pizza, you know, with the thin base, it can be very thick and very fatty because the focaccia bread is very different from pizza, so don't confuse it. Found that Italians tend to call many things pizza when in reality it's not. And here applies the same rule as with the ice cream. In our experience, in little bakery shops, they tend to make it fattier and we don't like that. So to our taste, buying the bread in supermarkets was fine and with less amount of fat, which is really important. The siding all the way was overall good and is comparable to Camino de Santiago level. So we will generally have little to no problems with that. But we were always use GPS navigation anyway, just in case. But here we weren't really searching for any alternatives. As you may know about us already, we like to be stealth camping all the time and this time wasn't an exception. And on this trail we found that it was pretty easy to find a spot every day because the terrain is the field and it normally has the forest close to it, so it was always possible. 
just the hills were making it a bit more challenging. So just make sure to find the fields with mild grass, with no hay rows, no cattle pasturing on it, and as far from the private properties and villas as possible. And then the chances that you get disturbed by anyone is really low. The rules about wild camping in Italy vary from province to province and really hard to know for sure. But we know that in most of the region probably it's not legal. But as always applies a general rule of setting up a tent in the dusk and leaving early in the morning. It works for most of the cases. What we stumbled upon here were many signs saying that it is a private property and the entrance to the land is forbidden. And some of the signs had the rope on it, so actually crossing the path where you need to go. But in the end we decided that it was more related to the cars than for the walkers or pedestrians. So with time we didn't mind it that much. But of course if you see the real gate in front of you, then you know you're not welcome on this land. Of course sometimes when we had a chance we stayed in the campsites as well. But we can say that they are really available on the whole trail. Usually they are far off of the way. So there are just several of them where you can stay. But the option of staying in the tent is definitely the cheapest of all because we can see here that the hostels are quite expensive and it's actually much more expensive than Camino de Santiago and we feel like the infrastructure of the albergs is not very developed here right and yeah so if you're going on a budget it won't be the option for you Italians speak good English it was a surprise for us having experience living in Spain where not a lot of people can actually speak good English we've been in a very remote locations and even there we could be understood and receive an answer on any request with a little exception when we had some troubles explaining ourselves, Spanish was very handy, as some words are very similar and people are able to understand them. Knowing French language sometimes help as well. So the more languages you know, the better. Here most public transportation, train station, have everything doubled in English. And while we're touching the transportation topic, we wanted to point out one important thing about the bus tickets. So if you find yourself in need to take the bus, always buy your tickets in advance. They are normally sold in the tobacco shops, tabachi it's called here. And if you're going to travel in the same region, you can buy a bunch of them and then use it when you need it. They don't have a day limit use, so this is nice. Because at first we had several cases getting on the bus when we really needed. And the schedule of the bus was like one or two buses a day and really needed to get to one place. And so we were at the bus station the bus was coming we hopped on the bus and the bus driver wasn't accepting us saying that we don't have the tickets and he's not selling the tickets and it was like what <laughs> mind-blowing so from this experience we learned that it's better to have them with you just to be calm about it because sometimes the bus drivers are selling the tickets but it's double the price so it's still not worth it and just better to buy it in advance what we liked the most and it was the highlight of our hike were the parts of the trail going through the old forest of ancient oaks and even the forest we're staying now there are a lot of them it is full of huge oaks and acorns we haven't seen such old trees before and some of them can even be more than 800 years old it is very fascinating for us there are not a lot of places left on earth where we can experience that meeting animals was another highlight of our hiking trip and wouldn't be the same without them hares and especially baby hares are very frequent to see and it was one of the first places where we could meet them so often. Also, roe deers were accompanying our trip. We slept close to them almost every night when we were stealth camping and they made it really special. And even though there is not a lot of forest and many fields, they are taking advantage of every tree line and so you can meet them very easily. Roe deer babies are very relaxed, especially if you are observing from a distance and are sitting calm. Also, we met otters in the lakes, partridges in the fields, birds, lizards, etc. Old rocky brick parts of the trail were very special as well, but are left only in few places, unfortunately. But when you walk on it, it makes you feel that you're going back in time, and it's an amazing feeling. Also, we met the most amount of castles, old ruins, fortified sites, old architectures and old little villages that we've seen on any trail. This trail is full of history, so if you allow the old authentic places, this may be the perfect trail for you. And so coming to the end of this video, I wanted to finish with the things we didn't like that much about the trail. There weren't many, but still it's important to know. So our main concern about Via Francicina are the parts of the trail going through the fast car roads, which are very dangerous and are not adapted to the hikers at all. And we've seen the actual signs saying that the safe part of the trail ends and they're taking off the responsibility for you if you continue hiking on the road. Uh, we have never seen it before on Camino, never. And with time we probably understood why, because the car drivers here in Italy seem to not care about the speed limits and rules 
whatsoever. And when we've seen the sign of 30 speed limit, the people were going like 60, and if you see 60, they would go probably 100 kilometers per hour. That was absolutely crazy. It is not good at all. It is dangerous. Having said that, we should know that on some of these dangerous parts, there were some sideways or sidewalks along the car roads. So it wasn't that bad, but on many there weren't any. So we guess they're still working and developing the infrastructure, the path itself, to be completely safe for the hikers. But for now it is not completely ready yet. And to our taste, there wasn't enough forest, river and natural parks in general. There are a lot of vineyards, olive trees, plantations, and clear fields used for agriculture. So definitely not enough wilderness. And this was all information I wanted to share with you in this video. Hope that you find it useful and interesting to know. And as always, don't forget to leave us a comment below sharing your experience with this trail or any tips and tricks you came up to. We are very curious to know about that and we think many people would be interested to read it as well. So leave us a comment down below. And of course, if this is the first video you watch in the series, you can go ahead and watch the whole series clicking on the link that we leave on the screen or down below, there is a whole playlist. We created many episodes of Via Francicina, so make sure not to miss it out. We are signing off for now. We hope to see you very soon on our next video. Keep in touch and take care, guys. Have a nice trail, everybody. Bye.